Hello and welcome to the Founders Log podcast, our regular look back on the previous month. So uh, September 2024, Carl, is what we'll be looking back at yep. today. Started off, it was actually um, a, a significantly busier month than August. August was quite quiet, mm. the first two weeks anyway. They got a bit, bit busier and then September has been a lot busier. We started off first off with um, a visit to Good to Great, a training company that's been a client of ours for a while now, based over in uh, the medieval market town of Bridge North. That's right. <laughs> over in bridge not too far for me a bit further for you so we met when we went up with uh johnny who's the uh the owner just for a general chit chat about his business and his plans for the uh near future and to discuss a discuss ways to keep um data created by the extensive network of associates backed up indeed yeah. because they didn't have that in place initially and it was something we was always wanted to do and so we had to sat, sit down and worked out a plan and and a price to get all this associate data backed up yeah that's right because People who are representing your brand and business with your email address, you never know what they might do at some point. So it's important you've got a backup to get back to them in case they uh, accidentally delete everything or go rogue on you. Yep, exactly. So that's uh, they still go rogue and they can still do all that stuff. But uh, yep. if they were to do anything today, at least we can pull it back. What it was before they decided to uh, let something happen to that data. Then the other thing that I was doing during August was a, a uh, one of our clients. Uh, Pinpoint Media, a marketing company, I was doing, they were refreshing their fleet of MacBooks. Yes. So I was in there uh, setting that up. I was fully expecting it to be a much longer job than it was because it being Apple and being a MacBook and you know that they're a bit of a pain to set up. But it turns out with uh, Apple Business Manager plugged into Google Workspace, it made it very, very simple. And I was able to do most devices within about uh, 10, 15 minutes at most. Yeah, and I spent most of September deactivating all the old MacBooks, which means activation keys, bypass codes, disk encryption, and stuff like that. I think there was more involved in getting rid of the old ones instead of the new ones. Yeah, if I doubt it, again, I'm secure before you bin them. Far too many people just bin their machines without realizing that there's probably data on that hard drive. It's a bit like photocopiers. No one realizes that photocopiers take a, a low res backup of every image they've ever taken. So when you put, when you scan the first yeah. bit of paper in a photocopy, it takes a low res backup, and then it uses that to do like the thirty or forty or fifty copies that you want to do, rather than have to scan it each time. It saves it low res memory, low res in the memory, and it just uses that and, and does all the printing. But it saves it all on a, a an old fashioned hard drive in there, mechanical hard yeah. drive normally. And um, if you don't remove those hard drives when you've been them, they're a goldmine yeah. for data thefts, thieves, because that data is most likely, at least a good qu quantity of it, is still going to be on that hard drive from passports from everything that you've ever used to ever yeah. use on that photocopier very true many a passport scanned on a photocopier yep especially as most photocopiers are at least a decade plus old mm. um it's, it's, it's the, the most dangerous part is um when people go to like uh, a post office or something like that to use a photocopier because we know how good the post office is with their it so there's no doubt that they know anything they know that, there's no chance that they know there's a hard drive in there keeping a copy of everything and they as soon as that printer needs uh, that photocopy and needs replacing they just wheel it out the back someone yeah. comes and collects it yeah and takes all that data with them yeah no, very true very true yeah the next thing is um i've just been working on uh because as people might not know google domains which was a fantastic service by google they sold yeah. squarespace domains mm, which is a do. kind of a crappy service it's not not very good so no. Google Domains had amazing things like uh, like with a Google Doc, you can share it and give people access to to it. Google Domains, you could share a domain and give people access, just that domain, so they could access settings on there and make changes. You yeah. can't do that in Squarespace. Um, the management interface and everything is just absolutely atrocious, really, really, really bad. So we're moving domains as they come up for renewal over to uh, Cloudflare. Yeah. Which is our, our new partner now, really, for domain name and domain name, uh, domain, domain name management. Yeah, it's, what a shame. The world's best domain name system, Google Domains, sold and then just removed. That made no sense. It was the best. Yeah, but they, they should have kept, they, what Squarespace should have done is just kept the Google Domains whole system and just changed the logo in the top left from Google Domains to Squarespace Domains and replaced their, their current Square Domains with Google Domains uh, interface yeah. and user because it was just so much better and had so many more features. That would have been good, wouldn't it? Yeah, that would have been good. Yeah. Cloudflare is a pretty good service their customer service so far when i have needed it a few times has been pretty terrible mm. thankfully i've not needed it uh i only needed it on one domain but the uh the cloudflare is very good and it gives you a lot of um features included that you don't normally get with uh it gives you some more stuff than you got with uh, google domains 
uh, included on any domain, just uh, security settings and speeding yeah. things up and caching things in a better, better manner. Yes. And then the final thing that I thought was notable in September for us was um, Google Notebook LM. Yes. Which is a fantastic tool. It's a where you load in data sources and you can then ask the AI to interrogate this data for you and give you answers based on it. But the the, the secret killer feature is it can make a podcast based on the data you've got in there. Indeed it can, um, yeah. It's not – the problem with the podcast is you can't – you can't craft it. You can't tell it what not to include and what to include in the podcast. Yeah. It, it does it just based on sources. So the fact that we're running this, uh, we're recording this um, founder's log is because we were going to do it through Notebook LM, but it wouldn't talk about all the things that I've just spoken about. It would talk about aspects of some of the things, other things it would skip, and there was no way of actually guiding it to say, I do want you to talk about and focus on the Google domains to Squarespace uh, domains transition and all that kind of stuff. And I couldn't do that. So the ones that we did make were good, but they weren't full, so we couldn't run them because we wanted to replace this episode of the podcast with uh, Notebook LM. Yeah. Uh, but in the meantime, you've gone and done a uh, a movie review um, yes. podcast through it. Tell us about yeah. it. Yeah, I try. I thought, you know what I can do? I'm going to link to Wikipedia and IMDb pages, particularly the trivia page on IMDb, for films that I like from the 70s and 80s, cult horror films and things like that. So I put those into Notebook LM, Let's it generate the podcast where the two people chat for about 10 minutes about that. Then I use Gemini to generate me the title for the introduction for the podcast to put on it. Then I use Spotify to publish the podcast. And then the image, I used Microsoft generating its images, which I think is Dali 2 for that one, to generate me the, the image for VHS Vault. And everything to do with that podcast was created using an AI tool. And it was actually a lot of, a lot of fun to do. And, and certainly the podcast is a great way of putting data into Notebook LM and letting it come back to you in an easy way to follow. I put in something boring, like a hire and lease agreement for my VW Buzz. And those two people talked about it for seven minutes. And it was good. Conversationally, they said, should he watch out for this? He should watch out for that clause. That clause could catch him out. It was a really good tool. It made, took something that was dry and made it more enjoyable. I like Notebook LM. And now you can link in YouTube videos as well. Yeah, I've um, I've I've done it for um, – I've used Notebook LM to uh, make a podcast for all the school emails that I get come through where they attach a PDF that's really long. And then I've been putting that in the school's WhatsApp channel. <laughs> People seem yeah. to enjoy it, to listen to it as they're driving along. Yeah. Because what you're going to do when you're on the school collection, you're stuck in your car, you might as well listen to something and catch up on the school news rather than having to read this – pdf on your mobile phone that you have to zoom in and zoom out to try and read the content because it doesn't feel it doesn't fit the screen properly um it will be great when you can then use prompts to tell the podcast how to sound and maybe even take your own voice too if you want it if it will do that will it be amazing then that'll be coming but uh, that's already here actually but uh, yeah. it won't be with google because google plays it too safe so it's very unlikely they're gonna let you do your own voice in case you decide to i copy your voice and then make you say something outlandish and stick it on linkedin oh, yeah. or something like that yeah okay, yeah i get you yeah yeah Google plays it a bit too safe on their AI. Um, there was an example that I had a few days ago. I can't remember what it was, but I told you about it, and it started It started its response mm, yes. to me, and then it was halfway through the response, and then the response disappears, and then I get a message saying, oh, um, I'm just an AI language model. I can't discuss those sort of things. Mm. But, well, you can because you've already given me half the, half the answer. I saw you typing it in, and then you just something fired, some sense, no, censorship so, fired yeah. and, and blocked it for me. It wasn't even something like uh, I believe you're asking about about that. Use, I think you're asking about the use of a, a, a light swear word by Americans or something. Oh, that was it. Yeah, S H I T. I was asking yeah. them. I was because you always hear them say the F word. So I was asking, do Americans actually use the S word? And it started responding back to it, yeah. and then it went, and then it's then it stopped. Someone's on the yeah. front door. If you heard that, but only just. They can wait. <laughs> um, so, uh, but it look, look, Notebook LM has gone down quite well for clients. It's, it's mm -hmm. been interesting. I don't know if any of them are actually using it heavily, uh, but there has been interest. I did actually look at some Gemini reports earlier for one client who's currently got a Google Workspace and uh, Google uh, Gemini Enterprise working. And um, out of the 16 or so people they have in the team, there was about eight that were using it quite uh, from a medium to high level. Mm, okay. So they may be, uh, it looks like they're going to be subscribing to that for uh, a handful of the people anyway. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, moving on to our YouTube channel. Uh, so uh, last month in September, we actually produced six videos in total for our YouTube channel. Yeah. Four of those videos are exclusive to clients, so they're not able to be seen on the, the main YouTube channel. 
for the two videos that people who listen to this podcast can view who aren't clients uh, how to set Chrome as a default browser on Mac, just because that whole interface has changed and it needed updating. Mm -hmm. Great video on that. And then I did do an ultimate guide using Notebook LM for research. So if you're interested yeah. in trying out Notebook LM, go check out our YouTube channel. There's a whole video on there of how you can use how to use Notebook LM. I recorded it before you could add YouTube videos as a source. But it doesn't really make much difference. It's just an extra option now that you can add a YouTube video as a source yeah. as well. Um, then we did a blog post again with the blog post. There were six blog, blog posts composed, but three of them are exclusive to clients. But the three that people listening to this podcast who aren't clients can see are the many ways you can use uh, Gemini in Google Workspace to speed up your work. So I did a whole blog post on all the features of Gemini in all the different tools through from Gmail, Doc, Sheet, Slides to uh, take notes for me in Google Meet and all those features, how you can use them and yeah. how they benefit you. Um, I even focused on the new gems feature, which is where you can create your own um, AI just to talk about specific topics you want. And we yep. did one called the roaster, which essentially roasts people based on what they've put in their LinkedIn profile. So you, yep. you download a copy of their LinkedIn PDF, you stick it into this uh, gem, and then you ask it to uh, it will automatically do it or just roast the person based on their uh, their experience. And it's, it was pretty good. I did it for one person. It was rather... It was incredibly brutal, so much so I didn't share it with them because I thought this might be going a bit too far. It was. Yeah, it is uh, pretty brutal when you do that. Um, and then the, another one was I updated our blog post about stepping away, remember to lock your computer, because I often see photos and pictures on LinkedIn from people who are in the same industry as us who've gone and taken a photo of a an un, uh, you know a laptop that's left open on the train or in a coffee coffee shop and the person's walked away. Yeah. And, Potentially anyone could jump on that machine and do what they want. It's very unlikely it's going to happen, but it's best to lock it because it's easy for someone to grab the laptop and walk out with it while it's unlocked and actually get, keep access to your data. It's the whole point about mobile phones, the reason that they uh, these people, mainly in London, it seems, ride up and grab your phone out of your hand while you're using it because they want to grab it while it's unlocked because yeah. that's where the value is. They get the data. They can try and access your bank accounts. They can send messages to like your mom pretending they're your, pretending it's you, that you've got problems and need to transfer some money and all that kind of stuff. So if it's locked, the value of that just completely goes away on the phone. It's basically totally useless if the phone is locked, so that's why they grab it. Um, interestingly, uh, Google is bringing out a new feature for Android called theft detection. I was going to say, yeah. it the speed of phone moves instantly. Is that yeah? What so yes. if you're if you're walking around with your phone unlocked and it and it, it detects, I guess using it uses the sensors in there, so yeah. probably G forces all that kind of stuff. How quickly the phone has been moved yes. while it's unlocked, and it will automatically lock the phone for you based on that movement. That might, that's exactly what I was thinking. They should put a feature in so that if it goes from uh, one mile an hour to forty miles an hour, it like right that it's either been dropped or we need to lock it. Yeah, one of the other. Yeah, well, if it's been if it's been dropped, it's dropped for it won't be more than a second, would it? Yes. Yeah. 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 All of a sudden, nothing to forty miles an hour for a, you know, a good five, five, ten seconds, and it's probably been nicked because it's, you're not going to fall that long. Yeah, that sounds like a good feature coming. Look out for that. And then I did a blog post on, on uh, Notebook LM for Google Workspace, just for people who don't want to watch uh, videos. And finally, it's just our assistance and support statistics now. So um, we were contacted 141 times last month. Yeah. And out of those, 113 contacted us to request assistance. They want to know how to do something better. And in comparison, uh, 28 asked for support where something needed looking at. So it wasn't going as they expected. Um, of those who sent a message for asking for assistance to do something better, 86 received a complete interaction in less than five minutes. So they contacted us. We replied and they were back to doing whatever they wanted to do better within uh, five minutes. Uh, 26, it took between five to 30 minutes. Uh, one interaction took 30 minutes, but less than an hour to complete as the uh, requested advice was a bit more nuanced. So needed a bit more understanding before we could give them advice on how to do something better. And then the ones that were connect, uh, contacting for support, 13 received a complete interaction and returned to their work within five minutes. 14 received a complete interaction to their work and returned to their work within 30 minutes. And one took over 30 minutes, but less than an hour. Uh, what is uh, fantastic about fantastic about our statistics are we've done all that in the time it would take most companies just to acknowledge your first message. Yes. If you look at most IT companies, it's up to an hour at least before you all uh, get your first acknowledgement that someone's actually working. On it. You'll get the email back going, oh, we've received your message, but actually someone actually working on it, that's going to take, take up to an hour, yeah. possibly more before you get any acknowledgement back. Yeah. 
Um, 133 uh, subscribers contacted us through our unique instant messaging service, Kyle. Okay. Always the quickest way to get in contact. Six emailed and uh, two uh, used our website chat, but that was they were two new people who yes. hadn't been really told the correct way to get in contact, but they can go through the website chat and we still were able to sort it out for them. Yes, they were quite ingenious with that one, I think. Yeah. And then uh, stats showed that this that, that last month, only uh, three subscribers would not have had to get in contact if they'd had a regular uh, training. So uh, all going good? Yes. Anything you want to add before we round up this uh, episode? No, I think that's good for September. By the way, I've got some recommendation. Netflix, Mr. McMahon. Mr. McMahon, that's okay. okay. Yes. Well, Mr. McMahon is about Vince McMahon, the uh, the owner of WWF or WWE, as it's now okay. called. And it's all about him and how he uh, grew the business and built the business. Ah, okay. I have got a recommendation then. Amazon Prime uh, is a do four-part documentary about Frank Bruno, Lennox Lewis, uh, Nigel Benn, and Chris Eubank being the greatest boxers, and it's brilliant. Four hours I watched it last Sunday, back-to-back. -back, absolutely brilliant. I watched that. I've seen, I have seen that on my uh, thing pop up. Oh, it's excellent. Uh, uh, I always watch stuff with Chris Eubank just because I like the way he talks. Yeah, he's still great, isn't it? And in fact, yeah. he's got both sides. He's got that personality that everyone knows him for, but he also see a real humble side to him too because um, he goes to see uh, Watson, who, of course, was brain damaged in the fight. Anyway, it's great. Watch it. You really enjoy it. Will do. Yep. Uh, anyway, we'll be back next month. It might be me and Carl, or it might be AI, depending if Google lets us uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. do a bit more controlling on the output. So uh, speak to you then. Okay, see you later. Bye-bye.